Where are we going today? Are you, what, is it, what do the kids say? Touch grass? Are you ready to go touch grass? <laughs> yeah. We'll see it in real life. This one that we're going to is one of my favorites. I, uh, I like to see this yard because they made a lot of really great choices, but it's also, it's the kind of lawn that people aspire to have. It's, I'm telling you, when it's convenient for me, sometimes I do like to drive past it because, <laughs> uh, because it's nice to see. But You know, on my Saturdays, I wake up and I think... I'm going to go drive by some lawns. You joke, but I even plan my you running really paths sometimes in Peachtree. I do. If I come running in Peachtree City, I kind of know the high points, some of the ones I know that we treat. You really do give a, a new meaning to touch grass. Well, you know, it's it, these are really great examples, and I look forward to sort of uh, kind of walking through a little bit, not to necessarily nitpick this yard, because honestly, there are very few inclusions to really talk about here. Um, but it's it's still a really good opportunity to uh, to look at some of the small stuff some of the regular stuff, some of the normal stuff that even a yard where the turf type that was chosen was correct and the management practices are really, really good. You know, there's still stuff to talk about. This is not sponsored by Bucky's. <laughs> you could really survive if the apocalypse happened and the only thing you had was a Bucky's, you'd probably be okay. And you could still keep up with other luxuries like home decor. I love Bucky's as much as you love a clean lawn. And the one that we're going to see this one. This is like so beautifully laid out. Oh, look at the baby. Oh. <gasps> we have an oh. unexpected visitor. So we were talking on the way here. I mean, this yard's gorgeous. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. It's an aspirational lawn, but even in the best lawns, the best maintained lawns, there's always you know something to talk about. Start off with the things that they did really well. They've they've chosen the right turf choices and they've yeah. they've made all of those choices well. So I see some mower damage here. Yeah, I mean you can certainly tell the the undulations in the landscape in the hill, right? Yep. I mean you can tell where as they as they mow over this knoll there's a very prominent knoll in this yard it's going to make for some uneven some uneven cut heights and that's honestly going to contribute a little bit to transition this time of year since we are in late spring at the moment i mean mower size will contribute to this too yeah mm -hmm. yep the larger the deck sort of the less flexible it can be right smaller decks cover a smaller area so when the pitch changes and stuff there's less to worry about there uh, and you know smaller mowers Directional changes, things like that, will help to mitigate certain certain things like this. Yep. Let's go. Let's uh. Let's keep. Let's keep moving. I do think it's important to note too that even the the best lawns, well, there's going to be a couple of weeds here and there. This is nature after all. Yeah. So this is interesting. It looks like they're trying to grow um, some fescue right here, but over time, with how shady it is and things like that it's a good thing to consider probably extending that rock bed up yeah. here and just ex bringing the pine straw out um yeah. you know the fescue might do okay but it's still very shady and it just yeah. is one a little less maintenance for them to just go ahead and and then you also take into consideration the drainage coming down yeah exactly it's just going to present more challenges yeah. than it's probably worth trying to maintain. Yeah, it's kind of the growing grass where it wants to grow thing, right? Mm -hmm. picking, picking your battles and, and focusing on the areas that want to be grass. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. All right, well, cool. Also, I think that it's important to note as we round this corner here that they've continued to make that choice there with the drainage that you mentioned, mm -hmm. but they're also not trying to force something to happen here. They've chosen to, to not have to try to grow turf grass here where yeah. conditions are just going to fight them. These homeowners are such a great example of people who like have oh, a threshold for things that aren't, you know, well, and they, they, they understand the process. 100%. They've segmented so well, yeah. you know, with, the, with these trees out now that, they, that they'd removed, there's way less shade constraint. There's still maybe a little bit and stuff in the landscape. You can see where there's moss and stuff yeah. down there. But every once in a while, uh, when the plants get overwhelmed, what you'll end up with is decline in a very specific area. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a good example of that. There's been some reversion in this area after some environmental stress had taken out the hybridized zoysia. 
a solution here would be to, to kill out the things that are not what you want them to be. So using a, a non-selective or something along those lines and replacing this area with sod. Yeah, putting some sod pieces in is the yeah. fastest way to repair yeah. an area. It's the closest thing to instant gratification that we have in grass. That's right. I'm noticing another uh, potential drainage oh, yeah. issue up here. Oh, sure. That oh, yeah. So the way the gutters are here, unless it's redirected, this could cause a drainage issue in this area. Sure. So having some different landscaping done or redirecting the gutters, I think, would be really helpful. On top of it, from the storeway is a path of travel. So mm -hmm. over time, it's just going to show wear and tear to the area. Mm -hmm. So creating an intentional pathway, doing some rock beds or something to help redirect this would be helpful. I'm noticing one more thing actually while we're standing here. Look right there. Oh yeah. You see the mower path there? Yep. Sometimes this happens smaller turf areas this isn't a particularly wide spot so if they're using a large mower there's only one path kind of mm -hmm. in and out of there uh, if they could find a way to use a smaller and unit what do we or... call those spots what do you call those spots Ruth? pinch points that's right I, we do call them pinch points because there's only one way in and one way out and it certainly it, it focuses the damage but if they could use a smaller unit and change their directions and stuff they would end up not having rutting and potential turf damage long term yeah. um, from using a large mower in this area yeah and in order to repair these yeah. spots, I think, um, you know, they can always do a little bit of top dressing, oh, yeah. that 50% uh -huh. play sand and topsoil, just a thin layer, and mm -hmm. it will encourage the, it will level it out and encourage those spots to fill in. Yeah, it'll level the, it'll yeah. level the indentions back out again. Yep. Absolutely. As far as an example goes, I know we're talking about some of the little inclusions and stuff in this landscape, but as far as like really great intentional landscape design, they have made all the right choices. I it's know. the right turf type. They really have. They chose the yeah. right landscaping plants. It's beautiful. They've segmented and they've made areas that need to be natural. Just, I mean, it's it's perfect. It He's is like, perfect. Jared's like shaking. He's this is, so hard right now. He's like, this is peak. This is peak me. <laughs> I mean, what a beautiful property. I mean, it's just a great example of how all the right choices are made and all the maintenance is so good. And mm -hmm. there's still little things to talk about, but it's just beautiful. So simple problems, easy solutions, but absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And I really love too how they've shown a great example of how to incorporate natural spaces in Agreed. areas that are challenging. Agreed. Well, I'm looking forward to doing this next time. <laughs> That's right. Get that. <laughs> Can't wait to touch grass, touch grass again.